they haven't quite got a hold of, and therefore they come in with some disease or some, uh, some interference in their physicality, and that will guide them in a certain direction. It's, it's uh, think of it kind of like a, um, you know, blinders on a horse. It's going, to, it's going to tunnel your vision towards a certain direction. If you have strengths, the idea in each life in, incarnating is not to, again, exhibit your, your former strengths, but to actually work on your weaknesses. And this is what a lot of people don't seem to realize is, is crucial and is going on here. And that's why if you judge people in this reality, you may have it all wrong. In other words, you may see somebody who's really emphasizing some character trait that you think is completely out of balance. But you have to remember that balance in a, in a sort of eternal um, individual is not uh, going to be visible. You're not going to be able to see where what they're balancing because they may have a balance from a prior life that they're bringing in with them where they, ha they were out of balance, they spent a lot of energy on the female side, and this life they need to really emphasize the yang side of their character. And that does not mean that they are doing something necessarily wrong or out of balance for them. And, of course, all of this has to be tempered by how it affects the people around you and so on, and, and that's how karma gets generated. But this, this is an interesting subject, and it's, it's actually quite fascinating. And I think when people are get into the healing idea of it, the spiritual aspects are, are really paramount. And learning about things like multidimensional realities, prior lives, etc., uh, is vital for healers to get involved in. And this is part of the reason why I, I distrust the medical establishment, the, um, you know, the straight and narrow sort of uh, consensus reality medical establishment and, and basically don't don't go and, and, and frequent their offices because I don't believe that they have the whole picture by any stretch. You know, um, I, I, it gets very complicated, and that's one of the reasons why uh, integrative alternative uh, medicine is so strong is because the existing medical model does not approach it. In fact, uh, the existing medical model has gotten worse. They've gotten more, they've put on more blinders. They focused on more specialties. And so they don't see, like, for example, uh, a person that's working in on kidneys um, uh, will not necessarily see the emotional aspect to it. And, for example, all, all of our emotions that you can come with, come up and, and think about all have a physical connection. For example, if you're going to a urologist for a kidney problem and a kidney specialist, then the uh, issue could be that um, you're just pissed off. It's not hard to understand what that emotion, the pissed off, means. And it's not hard to understand when we're talking about the colon, what being anal retentive is. <laughs> That's the nice word for asshole. Where it's not hard to understand what it's like when somebody says they're green with envy. It's related to the gallbladder. Or somebody nauseates me. We were talking about the stomach, or you get my bowels in an uproar, or um, and there are many, many other uh, emotions, and all emotions can be connected to a part of the body. And one of them is, like for example, lungs are grief. You'll have a 90-year-old couple that's been married 60 years. One dies, and the other one dies very soon after with with uh, pneumonia because they're grieving and they don't grieve outwardly anymore and cry. They're grieving because their lungs grieve and that fills up full of fluid and so they're actually crying inside. And so what happens is we can't bring that spouse back, but we need to make sure that people like that move through the process, the grieving process, all five steps and don't get stuck. This is Jeff. This is Jeff. Okay, uh, I guess we're on the air with you, Jeff Grupp, and I hope that hey. you are, are still uh, willing to join us here. Sorry for this interruption, Dr. Waterman. You were on the air, Jeff, uh, on Argusog Radio with Kerry Cassidy from Project Camelot and with Dr. Waterman, who is a frequent guest of mine, but he's also got his own radio show on, on this Argusog Radio right after this show. Hi, Jeff. Uh, good. Hi, nice to uh, talk to you for the first time. Thank you for having me back on 
uh, the show for the second hour, uh, Carrie. No problem. Uh, it's been something of, of a very hectic experience here, and we were just talking here about health and healing, and uh, Dr. Waterman was just making a very interesting point. Um, so do you want to just finish your point a little bit, uh, Dr. Waterman, and then we would bring uh, in Jeff Grupp's, perhaps his point of view on that as well. Well, what I was saying was the physical, emotional connection to each one of the organs and that specific type of emotion so that oftentimes all you have to say is a word like, I'm pissed off and you know what organ it is. And so <laughs> what, what we do, what we, and, and you know, we're talking colloquial gutter language here, but under people, people understand what we're talking about. And, and so what we want to do is we want to move them through that emotion. Uh, emotions aren't right, they're not wrong, they're, they're just there. So we just want to move them through that healing process. And so oftentimes it has absolutely, well, the existing medical model of drugs has nothing they can do for it. It has to be inside in a different level, a very different level of emotional moving. And that's why it's so effective oftentimes to have uh, other kinds of therapies involved in integrative alternative health, whether it be frequency healing, whether it be deep homeopathics that are deeper than the acute level um, and, and so forth. And that's why I refer out to people that specialize in that. So, you know, all of us practitioners and healers need to learn where, where our strengths are, and then we need to network with a good group of, of people that we can use kind of as a tool in our belt so that we move people into the healing process with the right person, the right therapy, and cooperatively work together because we can't all do it all. And that's some of the re uh, problems that we have in integrative alternative health. They all want to do everything, and they can't, and it's just not possible. So we need to recognize our limit. We need to be able to find good practitioners to refer out to, and that's kind of where I was, um, where we were, Jeff, talking about that kind of associa uh, association with, with physical and emotional. Uh, yes. Yeah, very uh, Jeff, I was I was talking about the aspects, the more spiritual aspects of what an, a soul comes in with and uh, their prior life experiences and how they're going to be willing to either accept a healing or bring a healing into their life or not or reject it because they have something they want to learn instead and that a healer needs to honor that. So we're, we're kind of covering a lot of bases here, but... I don't know. I haven't read your books, and maybe you could even give yourself a short bio for people listening here. Because uh, last time around uh, with Dr. Deagle, we didn't have much time to actually introduce you uh, properly. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Jeffrey Grupp. My website is antimatterradio.com, and I've written three books. Uh, one's called Corporatism: The Secret Government of the New World Order. Another one is called The Telescreen, The Empirical Study of the Destruction of Consciousness. And then the last uh, one is called Telemetation, Cosmic Feeling and the Law of Attraction. And they're both selling very well. And uh, the, the last one, Telemetation, is the one I'm personally most excited about just because it's um, such a uh, wonderful thing for people to realize, like, um, like what your other guest is saying, that the real medicine uh, is, uh, has to do with our own uh, spiritual natures. We have to integrate our spirituality with, you know, herbal sub or herbal entities that we ingest and uh, various kinds of meditation or energy medicine and so forth. And this is the real medicine. Big, the big pharmaceutical companies and the orthodox medicine, they don't have any um, cures for really anything that I can think of in the last 50 years. And sometimes people say, oh, no, the polio you know, vaccine was a cure. Well, that was over 50 years ago, and I don't think it was even a cure anyways because they changed the definition of polio right when that vaccine came out, so it made it look like fewer people had polio all of a sudden. Uh, and, <laughs> and, so. and you're right. There is, there is, it, there wasn't. It didn't, it didn't cure it anyway. So I agree. I, I agree totally. Yeah, so it, it's, I mean, the, the ultimate freedom that we have is for us to just realize that there's, there's nothing to worry about when we're in tuned with our innate spirituality. And it's just the biggest trick, I think, of modern civilization that, uh, 
modern civilization gets us all to ignore this innate spirituality that we have because we're always lured into looking outside of ourselves, into looking at our televisions or looking at our jobs or looking this way or that way. But it's inside that we need to be focusing on at least partially.